Good afternoon guys, my name is Brandon and we've got some welding repair to do today. Stick around. So today's welding repair project is going to answer a lot of questions that you guys have been having lately. Uh, you guys have mentioned that you want to see some stick welding on thin material. You guys have been asking me about my Blue Demon welder and we've got a repair project today to do so we're going to do all of that. My wife picked up this chair a while ago and it's metal and she got the matching one right over here. But the problem with the matching one is it's seen a better day. You can see how that's broke off there. The back's broke off. It's broke off up under here. You can see. The leg is broken off. So we're going to see if we can fix that because this is a matching piece to that right there. So this is going to be added to the beginner welding series and maybe you're asking yourself, well, how do you, which process do you pick? How do you know which one to use? Well, so you see this one has a lot of paint on it, right? There's paint all over it. Um, so TIG welding requires it to be really, really clean. So TIG welding is kind of out. If I, if I wanted to spend the time to clean it really good, then that could be part of it. But um, it's kind of got this white and black see-through surface. It looks old uh, and weathered and beat up, and that's the look that we want. So TIG welding really doesn't have to be the process for this. Because of all the paint, MIG welding isn't a great option here. It's better than TIG, but it's not really great. Stick welding is good when you can't get the surface perfect. You can't get it, you know, all cleaned up 100% the way you want it. It's, stick welding is a little more forgiving than MIG welding. So that's what we're going to do today, except it's more difficult on thin material. So this is fairly thin material. We'll get the thickness gauge out, we'll get the welder set up, and we'll go over all of this. This is going to be a fairly detailed uh, repair on welder settings, and uh, it, like I say, it's going to be part of the beginner welding series. So let's get the welder unboxed right now and get rolling on it. Here we are, guys. This is the Blue Demon 160 STI. Now. This is a 160 amp DC inverter welder. This will do uh, scratch TIG and stick. So this is going to be a good welder for this. And you guys have been asking about, you know, what can this thing do on 115 amps, uh, 115 volts, like just a regular receptacle that you'd have out in your workshop or, you know, could be working out in your driveway. That's what we're going to simulate here today. So. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to run this on 120 volts. We're going to plug it in, just like a lot of you guys may do, and we're going to make a repair. Now, if you guys want to see the full review and unboxing of this welder, I'll put a link up here somewhere, uh, and you guys can check that out. But for right now, we're just going to cover the basic functions of stick welding on a regular 120 volt receptacle today. So the adapter converts this welder from 220 down to just your regular standard wall plug. We're going to be welding DC electrode positive. So we'll attach our earth, depending on where you come from, or ground. That'll be on negative. And we'll attach our work lead, or our stinger, to the positive side. So you guys may sometimes run into an issue where you're working out in your driveway or your garage or wherever you are. You're at a buddy's house and you got a little project to do and you, you can't quite reach um, the plug-in from your welder. So you're going to have to run a cord. Well, if you do that, just remember, running an extension cord is going to reduce the number of amps that your welder is going to get. So knowing that, you're going to want to run the heaviest or biggest extension cord you can get. Not a little flimsy cheap one. It's got to be something that's substantial, uh, preferably number 12 wire or larger. Let me show you what I mean. This is number 12 wire and look at the size of that compared to like a typical little uh, flimsy extension cord. That's 16 gauge wire, the green one. This one here is 12 gauge and it's got a real heavy insulation on it and you don't want a real long run I think this cord right here is probably 20 feet tops all right so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a wire brush and I'm gonna try to clean everything up so you can see we got a break there now this material here is solid 
the uh, rods that we got to weld to. That's solid. And then we'll clean this up. We got a, another broken weld. Looks like here and here. And another one under here. And we can't get to all of them. That's the problem. We so a 6011 rod is going to be perfect for this because it's real forgiving on uh, paint prep and cleanup. A lot more forgiving than other rods. So I'm going to start wire brushing this down. Nothing too fancy, and I'll bring you back when I'm done. So now I'm just going over all the repaired areas with a wire brush. The better job we do here, the better job we get in the end. All right. So the first thing I think we're going to do is we'll weld this piece back onto here. But before we do that, we got to know how to set the welder up, and we got to know what our material thickness is. So if you don't have one of these, these are super handy to have. I'll leave a link down in the description for it. But it tells you what uh, the material is you're working with. So that's you know, and that works good for stick welding, MIG welding, TIG, all of it. If you don't have one of these, pick it up. They're cheap. They're only a few bucks and it's going to make your life uh, a lot easier. So we go down to here and there's a lot of paint on this, but that's telling me that this is eighth inch material right there. Then we'll do the same thing here. This is all snapped off from that. So we'll throw our gauge in there. And again, we're at eighth inch. It, it's showing probably 10 gauge, but I don't believe it. I think it's just because there's so much paint on it. So we'll call that eighth inch. So we're going to use eighth inch 6011 rods. A 332nd rod would have been a better choice, but that's what we got. So what you want to do now is go to MillerWelds.com. We're looking for our amperage. We'll click on stick welding. And selected material, what are we welding? We're gonna weld some mild steel. And we gotta select electrode. And we're gonna use 6011 eighth inch. Let's pick that. And that tells us suggested amperage range 75 to 125 uh, DC electrode positive which is uh, what we're set up now it has the deepest weld penetration and uh, yeah gives you all the stuff that you need to know minimum prep rough bead high spatter but that's okay because remember I said that this can be a uh, it's gonna be rustic it's gonna be rough looking that's all right and it's an all position rod so there we go. So we're going to start out, we're going to set it for 75. All right, so we got our welder plugged in to a 120 volt receptacle. We're not on 220, so this is what you guys are going to be doing a lot. We're going to switch over to our stick welding mode. Go to the back, snap on our switch. And we're going to set it for 75. And that's where we're going to begin. 75. All right, let's get everything clamped up and get ready to go. One of the things that really stands out with this welder for me is how well the rod starts, especially on this dirty material that I'm welding on here. And the reason for that is it has like an arc force and it's an added amperage that you get automatically. The machine does it all by itself that when you strike in the arc, it just gives an added uh, bit of amperage and it just makes the rod start really nice and it works really slick. Now we just have to do that on all the broken places around the chair. I'm very impressed with how this welder welds on 120 volts. I can't feel a difference between the 120 setting and the 240 setting. Now, here's a great example coming up of getting a, a arc started. Scratching motion. Scratching, just like you're lighting a match, and there it goes. That's a great demonstration to see what it is I'm doing to get that to light. Most of the time, whenever you buy welding rods, it'll say right on the box or the package what the recommended settings are, and it'll give you all that information. But, you know, a lot of times you may not have that, or, you, or it may have worn off after a while, and you just kind of forget. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link down below to the Miller 
weld site and then you just punch in whatever it is you're using for material and it'll give you the recommended settings for it and there we are guys now this here was the perfect process for this repair 6011 rod is super forgiving as far as the coatings and not being able to get it completely clean we've gone around and reinforced everything on it all I got to do now is just go back through and dust it with some paint and that's all there is to it guys I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it answered a lot of the questions that you guys have been asking me lately and you can weld thin metal with a stick welder and you can do it on 120 volts so I I hope you enjoyed that it was kind of fun to do and it's real world this is stuff that you guys would be doing so if you want to check out that welder or any of the other things that I've been using go ahead and click on the link down below and I think we finished this up just in time because it looks like we got a storm rolling in and I can hear thunder in the distance. So that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day, guys. See ya.